Thank you very much. Um, I would like to start uh, with this sketch, um, with this image, which um, shows a bit what we are doing currently, but also gives an, an outlook um, for future proposals that we are um, that we are having. So um, overall, this is a collaboration project between um, our institute, the Max Planck Institute for the Science of Light in Erlangen, Germany, together with the University of Erlangen and with the German space company, TESAT Spacecom, who develop and produce um, space-borne laser communication hardware, and with the German Aerospace Center DLR. So on the sketch here, you see a satellite. That's actually the one that we are currently using to perform measurements on ground. Um, what we actually have done, and what I will show you here, is we have um, upgraded um, a ground station such that um, this ground station allows us to do quantum limited measurements of the signals that we receive here from space. And in this case, um, it's from geostationary Earth orbit. So um, this is approximately 40,000 kilometers away from the ground station. 36,000 above ground, but of course you have some tilted angle normally, so the distance is in this order. And the, the modulation rate is 2.8 gigahertz. Um, now, if one looks on ground, um, um, currently in QKD, we have um, this issue that if you want to do really long distance, so if you want to connect between, let's say here, Japan and um, Australia or other places, it's difficult because um, you have too much losses in the fiber. Of course, you can um, think about uh, putting trusted nodes in between, like for example, China is um, doing and Patel and, and others are doing. So you might have a difficulty of, uh, of putting uh, such trusted nodes for these very long distances. So I think they're uh, good for mid-range um, distances, but for like very long and global distances, the satellite um, is a very good option. Um, the reason is that most of the time, most of the distance, um, the signals travel through vacuum, and there is no loss, actually. The only loss mechanism that you have is um, diffraction. And then only uh, the, the last piece of the pass, they travel through atmosphere, but you have good weather conditions, and also the atmosphere is, is transparent. So um, let me give a quick overview of, um, um, of the history of what we have done at the Max Planck Institute in Erlangen. We started around 2000 with a lab experiment. Then we went out in 2007. Um, we went out in the real world, used a free space um, channel of 100 meter <laughs> as a next step of 1.6 kilometer. And uh, now last year, um, we, um, we um, started to, uh, to perform measurements together with TZ Spacecom and, and the DLR. We went to, uh, to a ground station, which looks like this. So here is a, it's a periscope to, to point the beam. And the first thing we, we did last year is to, to test whether um, this, this upgrade of the ground station, which is mainly on the detection side, if, um, if this is really working. And so this was successful. And what we also were able to do is to do links um, to a retro reflector. So here we're actually on, uh, on, on Tenerife, where also other people have done experiments. And we, um, we could use this campaign here to, to um, test the system, the ground station, with a, with a link that is retro reflected from the Teide uh, mountain. And then, so finally, beginning of this year, we were able to, to acquire the, the first signals um, from space. And I mean, the good thing is that um, the systems here, they are basically operational, so they are industry-grade uh, systems. So I think the very good um, thing is that, that once we have clear sight to the sky, let's say, then um, we also are able to, to, to capture the, the links. I mean, we also have this, um, this nice feature of geostationary that is always there. So in principle, we could uh, measure 24-7. Um, in principle, it's 2.8 gigabits, so you can imagine how many tons of data we could, in principle, acquire. Um, okay, this um, goes one step back. It, it gives a, a quick impression of, uh, of our free space link in, in Erlangen. So I, I want to just to mention that um, what we're doing here is, is, is continuous level protocols at the moment. So we have uh, like a B92, BB84, or one could also in the classical world one would call it BPSK or QPSK, phase encoded in a sense. Or one could also um, talk about it as polarization encoded in the sense that we send along the local as with a signal. This has a nice advantage that we can do um, a nice homodyne Stokes detection where the local oscillator, since it travels along with the signal, perfectly matches with the, with the signal. So if you want to know more, you can um, have a look in, in these papers. 
So here I want to concentrate on one aspect, which is channel fluctuation. So, um, I mean, even though if you have um, good visibility, contrast, and so on, you still have um, a beam that is wandering due to atmospheric fluctuations, and this effectively, in the case when, you're, uh, when the, 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 the beam wanders across the aperture, you will have a fluctuating um, channel. So this is one of the challenges that one has to, 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 um, to tackle in, in, in free space. Um, yes, so, and I mean, as well, uh, here this, this applies, I mean, even though you have propagation through vacuum for most of the time, still you have the atmosphere um, when you want to go down to the ground station, so um, this applies um, here as well. And uh, now the nice thing is, so here is um, this overall satellite constellation where we use uh, one satellite out of it for our measurements currently. And the nice thing with the system is that um, if one looks in the principles, what they are doing, um, it's, a, it's a binary phase shift key with satellite detection. So on, on principle point of view, this is the, 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 the same um, as, as we are doing here in our free space link in, in Erlangen. Um, so the only difference is then, of course, distance. And um, it's also, um, it used to be speed, but um, I mean, about speed, we also are progressing now. So we are also building receivers now, which um, are able to, to acquire signals at that speed. Anyhow, so since there are these similarities um, on principle um, side, um, we have started this collaboration with, uh, with TSAT Spacecom and uh, with the DLR. And um, then, I mean, the measurement campaigns that we did together look like this. So here, uh, this is the, the, the optical ground station. Um, here's this periscope, which is pointing to, to the geo orbit. The satellite that we're using is located, located at 25 degrees east. Uh, it's called AlphaSat. And um, this AlphaSat is, is carrying one of these um, so-called laser communication terminals. Uh, in this case, as a demonstrator, but the next generation satellites, they um, are already flying with operational um, LCTs. Um, okay, so in, in detail, the setup looks like this. So in, in space, we have a laser uh, in the X, so 1064, two model laters, amplitude and phase. Um, then an amplifier, which um, one of course has to think about how to deal with this, because usually you don't want to have amplifiers in QKD, but I mean, still there are ways to, to, uh, to deal with that. And then the, the beam is expanded and directed to, to ground, and what we're doing on ground is a homonite detection. So, um, I mean, of course, now here we have the difficulty to, to match the signal to the local oscillator. Because this trick that I mentioned before, that we send the local oscillator along with the signal, this doesn't work here because we would need huge powers in space. So here is actually, a, in that sense, real local oscillator produced locally at the receiver. And I mean, then of course, to, um, to match this with the signal, we need to do phase front correction. This is also what, uh, what Thomas has uh, mentioned. Um, and luckily, we can benefit from, uh, from experts here uh, on, on the side of our collaborators and also others who have um, uh, produced this, uh, this ground station. So in the end, this, um, this phase run correction that we use here before we do the homodyning of, uh, homodyning of the signal is such that it's nearly lossless, one could say. So it's, it's only tiny losses. So, um, Excuse me. So if you think about it, it's quite fascinating. So you have a beam that travels, in that case, 38,000 kilometers, then goes through all the atmosphere, so uh, experiences all these turbulence. But still, you, you manage to, to correct the, the phase front such that you can launch into a single node fiber, actually as good as the students normally in the lab are able to do with a single node beam. <laughs> um, yeah. And yeah, so if we look in space, so here, um, you see again this uh, the system here embarked on this on this AlphaSat platform, um, and now so it's now from principle um, point of view, um, what it's doing, as I said, is a, is a binary phase shift key. So this means in in phase space, if you look at at phase space, you have these two states, which you could represent here with the Heisenberg uncertainty areas, and now. Now, if you want to do classical communication, which is actually the, the main purpose of these laser communication terminals, then what you want to have is um, states that only slightly overlap. I mean, you cannot avoid overlap uh, totally, but you try to make it um, as small as possible. On the other hand, if you, want to do it, uh, if you want to use quantum communication, so if you want to program KD, there what you essentially want is you want to have overlap and uncertainty. 
So um, one possibility to, to move from this, what sometimes one calls classical or let's say data communication regime into the quantum um, regime is to attenuate. So I mean, it's probably similar as, as for uh, in, a, in a single photon picture, there you also go down to the, to the quantum level in order to, in the end, benefit from an uncertainty. Um, yes, and um, so, so the good thing is that the system as it is, it has these two modulators. So one is the phase modulator, which switches between this, um, what we would call minus alpha and plus alpha state. And there's an, another modulator already implemented, which can um, modulate between these higher amplitudes and between smaller amplitudes. So here is uh, um, a signal that we have uh, acquired. Um, on ground with homodyne detection. Um, what you see here as an envelope, uh, this is actually an amplitude modulation which is running at approximately a megahertz, so it's approximately one microsecond um, period. And within this envelope, you, you see this BPSK binary phase shift key states. So within this envelope, it's jumping between um, those two possibilities. And you see, I mean, you have moments where you have large amplitudes, like here. But you also have moments where you go into amplitudes that are actually at the receiver in the quantum regime. So at the receiver is important to, um, to state. At the moment, we are able to, 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 um, to reach the quantum regime at the receiver. But of course, in the future, we, we have to do a bit more in, in, in space to reach the quantum regime also um, at, the, at the center. But still, I think it's, it's, it's very nice that using this existing system as it is, basically, one, one, one can one can do quantum measurements. Um, so if uh, now we overlap all of these signals, so if we take each of these periods and overlap or fold all of them, we, we end up with something like this. So here it's like varying from the quantum regime at the receiver to a more classical regime and going back to the quantum regime. And now if we cut through these, um, these traces here, this gives us histograms. So in the, in the end, what um, ideally would, we would expect is, um, is histograms of, um, of coherent states. So histograms of coherent states um, are Gaussian. And what we then can do is we can compare them with the histograms or the variants of the vacuum state. Um, and this is shown here. So here we have three examples. So here in a like, little bit more classical data communication regime, and here deeper in the quantum communication regime with more overlap, we have this, um, this double Gaussians that we expect as histograms, and we can compare those histograms, especially their width, with a vacuum state that we can locally measure as a comparison. And what we get out is the, the variance above the vacuum um, noise level. And as you can see here, this, this variance is, uh, is always in the order of uh, something like one or maybe up to 2%, which is actually for, I mean, for CV measurement, I think it's a, it's a typical value. Also, if you do lab experiments, you have difficulties to go below this, um, this 1%, which, I mean, actually is, is, is a tiny value. It's just 1% of the, of the uh, noise of the vacuum state. And so it's quite nice to see that, uh, I mean, even though we have this very long propagation distance, Additionally, you have all the atmosphere that, uh, that still you can determine the, the phase or the coherence to such a um, good level. Um, uh, okay, so the amplitudes, for example, in terms of alpha, it's between 0.6 and um, here uh, between 1.3, let's say. So if you square it, you um, would have the photon number in the states. Um, and then, of course, one thing to mention is, uh, I mean, even though geo is very nice, so you have sunlight there all the time, one drawback is, of course, a link budget. So, I mean, you're much further away than, than Leo. So, um, this has the effect that your beam um, broadens more, of course. So, the, the beam that we have uh, on ground here is, um, has a width of several hundreds of meters. So, this is, um, of course, more than from, from Leo. And since our ground station doesn't have several hundreds of meters, um, we, we, we lose some, some light at the receiver, let's say. And um, this, of course, has the effect that, that we also lose noise. So, so, so if there were noise somewhere in between satellite and our receiver, part of it would uh, get lost because we don't detect it. So this one has to consider. And one can do this by, um, I mean, 
we have done this in, in, in this picture here, where we say it's a, like a two-step um, propagation in, in, a, in a virtual concept that, that, we, um, that we depict here. We think about it in a, in a two-phase um, two um, propagation. So first we have propagation from space to the exosphere. So here you are still outside uh, the atmosphere. We, we don't um, expect any, any atmospheric influences. And then the second part of propagation is from, from the exosphere down to ground. And so if one, um, if one looks separately at, um, at these two um, steps in propagation, one will find that um, if one imagines that one would have uh, a virtual aperture here in space, so an aperture which um, has, in that case, the same dimensions as the as a ground station aperture, this aperture here would already um, receive quantum limited states, even though, um, due to this amplifier that I mentioned, even though from space you actually send um, states with excess noise. So, but these losses that we have between here, uh, between satellite and the exosphere, this help us in the sense that we can say, if we would put our station here in the exosphere, then we would have quantum limited states. And now we can look how much noise is added on the way between the exosphere and the, um, and the real ground station. And the value is um, 0.8. So um, it's, um, it's still only um, 0.8 of the variance of the vacuum state that could potentially have been added by the atmosphere. So overall, this means that the, the phase fluctuations, which on first glance might be a hindrance um, for doing such protocols, they um, seem to be low enough that one can actually think about many potential implementations of, um, of protocols on ground that use phase encoding. And that's actually also the, 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 the idea that, um, um, that we propose, for example, in, in, uh, in this manuscript here, uh, which also contains the measurement results. So there we, we outline a bit possibilities what you could um, do on ground, uh, which possibilities you would have on ground um, with several ground stations, but using um, one upgraded space segment. So, I mean, of course, what one can do in principle is, as we have done here, one can do CV measurements, homodyning, but one can also do DV measurements uh, that are phase encoded, such as decoy, such as uh, differential, phase shift, um, I think also cow is a, is a, is a candidate. So, th so the nice thing would be that, um, in principle, in the future, if um, we manage to, to, to like slightly upgrade the, the space segment, I mean, to have like, more attenuation and, and also to somehow neutralize this amplifier, let's say, then we could have a large number of ground stations who could um, take part in, in um, experiments. Okay, so this is uh, the status is basically what I said. The, the, the next steps are now to, to optimize this quantum receiver. Uh, so, uh, I mean, now in these measurement campaigns, we've noticed that there's potential to, 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 to optimize the receiver that we are currently using. We also think about collaborating to, um, to build DB receivers for ground stations. And the other thing is, of course, to, to upgrade the, the space segment such that in the end this would really be, um, this would really allow for a QKD in an in the end operational sense. Okay, so this is the last slide. Um, so this is the, the team that contributes here. So these are colleagues from, um, from Erlangen and from, from TSAT and from DLR. These were the people that had been uh, on Tenerife in the last measurement campaign. So Imran is, um, is here, sitting here in the back. Uh, we'll have a post tomorrow um, if you want to talk to him or, um, or now. Then uh, our group leader is uh, Christoph Marquardt, and um, like the overall division leader is um, Gerd Lois. Okay, so thank you for your attention. Thank you, Dominique. Uh, as the next speaker sets up, we will uh, take one question, even though we're out of time already. Yeah. So, but is the problem that 
you have different, the beam breaks up into different portions and you, you and they somehow get redirected yeah. 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 So you have a mixture of different segments of beams coming and arriving. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what I could also say, um, I mean, you have a, um, typically you have a coherence length of the atmosphere, so transversal coherence with a heat parameter in the order of centimeters, maybe 10 centimeters, if it's a good side or a bit more. Uh, but our aperture is larger than that. So um, this means that across the aperture, we don't have a coherent um, phase front. And then when we overlap it with local oscillator, this, this wouldn't match. So any aperture that is larger than a free parameter doesn't um, help you in, in acquiring more signal if you don't correct for it. Um, so I mean, what, what uh, is done here, we have um, it's a shark hartmann sensor measuring the wave front, and then you put it on a form of a mirror and correct for the phase front. And I mean, then, I mean, operationally, um, the people who are doing this, they, they know um, once one tells them how much the free parameter could be, they, they know how to um, design this to form of a mirror, so a number of elements and so on, and they know the algorithms, and then this works. So, um, I have to admit, we are not very deep into this, um, but. But you said there is an additional effect which, which limits the. The, the, the reason for it is, uh, this is that we don't capture all the beams. So there might be atmospheric things happening that we don't see because we capture only part of the beam. So we have done a like, worst case estimation, like extrapolating how much could have happened in the atmosphere based on what we have measured. So we measure basically nothing, like 1%, but if we extrapolate, uh, this still could be. When I do this, it means five including questions.